Public banking is not a new concept in other parts of the world, but it's not common here in the U.S. However, interest is growing in this alternative economic model in which a bank is controlled and initially funded by a government entity rather than private investors. A conference this Saturday in Santa Fe will explore whether it's a good fit for New Mexico, and advocates say it could reduce the impact of recessions and increase capital for local infrastructure projects and small businesses. One potential fan is Santa Fe Mayor Javier Gonzalez, who wants to explore creating such a bank in Santa Fe. And MIF producer Megan Kamerick talked with Gonzalez and Gwendolyn Hall-Smith. She's executive director of the Public Banking Institute. Gwendolyn Hall-Smith is here with us, and she's executive director of the Public Banking Institute. And Javier Gonzalez is the mayor of Santa Fe. Thank you both for joining us to it's talk to about here. this. Gwendolyn, let me start with you. The New York Times reported that at least 22 states are looking at this idea of a public bank. What is a public bank, and how does it differ from a private bank that we usually think of? Great, thanks. Great question, and thank you for having me. A public bank is fundamentally different from private banks insofar as that it's owned by the public, and the benefits of its lending activities go to the public. So it can pursue public goals, like infrastructure, affordable housing, education, job creation, in the way that private banks pursue those goals. And the returns on the lending that it does come back into the public sector for other public priorities. So how is it capitalized? Is it that in North Dakota there's a bank like this and the state puts all its money in this bank? Well, there's a difference between capital and deposits. Okay. And the question of capitalizing a public bank is usually a big question to answer as you enter into that whole debate. I think that given the amount of fines that have been assessed, the two big to fail banks in Washington, over $100 billion to date, mm -hmm. they could use some small percentage of those fines to capitalize public banks around the country. I calculated if you assume a $25 million capitalization requirement, less than 2% of those fines would be needed to capitalize public banks. But the capitalization question okay. also relates to the difference between public and private. Mm -hmm. The capital requirements are there because of the private sector taking on a fairly risky venture. There is a difference between the private sector and the public sector. So arguably, if we really look hard at public banks on a national level, the capitalization requirements for public banks might be quite different. The deposits, on the other hand, are what the municipality or the state would put in the bank and have interest paid on, and part of those deposits would be used for the lending activities that the bank does so that it can earn a return and pay the municipality its interest mm -hmm. on its deposits. And the other lending returns would go back into the general fund. And then what are they usually funding? What are the things, the projects that they're funding? That they're, pro they're funding a whole variety of projects. In North Dakota, they fund economic development, they fund student loans, they fund farming, and they fund housing. In, Nor in Vermont, where we have something quite similar to a public bank, it's the same configuration. We fund economic development for job creation, housing, student loans, and municipal infrastructure and state infrastructure. So the infrastructure borrowing that mm -hmm. goes on often by municipalities and states could also be supplemented through loans through the public bank. Now, um, Mayor Gonzalez, why do you think that this is a model you want to pursue in Santa Fe or in New Mexico? Well, we are um, currently uh, studying whether it's an appropriate model to pursue. I am interested as Mayor of Santa Fe to do everything we possibly can to get our economy moving again. And one of the critical components of getting any economy, mo economy moving is the support of small businesses and making sure that they have access to capital. We know that the largest banks in America have actually decreased uh, their lending to small businesses by over 50 percent. Um, and, and a lot of it is because the, the, the credit requirements are very restrictive on a small business that might have a great idea, that doesn't have enough cash in the bank. Um, there's huge growth opportunity for that business, but because the federal regulators um, have been so tough on community banks and other uh, banks in general, uh, that small business owner is having a, a difficult time getting access to credit. So what we need to do at the local level um, is to do what people haven't been able to do at the national level and sometimes at the state levels where uh, we've got to get access to or create access to capital that doesn't exist um, today for small businesses and for important infra infrastructure development. But let me push back a little bit. We have a lot of community banks in New Mexico. We have a robust micro lending community here that makes all kinds of loans to small businesses from very small to, to mid-size. Mm -hmm. 
And actually, uh, small business lending by credit unions grew by 21% over the last year. And we also have the New Mexico Finance Authority that funds projects all over the state. So why is there a need for some another model? It hasn't been enough, for one. Two, we know that the community banks are still denying credit to very strong uh, small businesses that are out there. Um, and, and the other area is that uh, typically small businesses, the New Mexico Finance Authority and others, um, you know, they will finance traditional infrastructure projects, the New Mexico Finance Authority will for, let's say, water lines and, mm -hmm. and roadways and, and office buildings. But when we talk about creating an economy, we need to invest in broadband infrastructure. We need to talk about some of the structural issues that um, are affecting our communities like early childhood development, uh, the expansion of, of health care facilities and communities. Uh, so that people can have access to good public health. Those are all areas that you can develop very strong business models around that uh, capital would help uh, um, ultimately in the end help them succeed. But today um, it's very difficult. Um, it, what we have at the local level is, is a, a pot of dreams out there that are difficult to achieve because access to capital has been um, tough. Now what we're doing in Santa Fe, uh, thanks to the help of, of many people, um, mm -hmm. We are, we are taking on a very methodical approach to this. We have uh, issued a request for qualifications to industry experts in the banking side uh, to talk to us about what's the feasibility to do this at the local level? What's the process? What's the risk to the taxpayers? How will it look ultimately at the end of the day so that taxpayers know that this bank is going to actually gov be governed as a bank and not as uh, a, a political entity, much the way they see their city council mm -hmm. uh, govern um, uh, city affairs. So, and I think that's a important distinction that people believe that a public bank is going to fall under the auspice of a mayor and a city council, and and that's not the case. Uh, okay. If if this actually comes to fruition, there will be some very strong uh, guidelines and standards that are in place to assure that the, that the public funds are um, are properly protected, that there are uh, federal guidelines that are going to be followed, and and that is something that's important here is that that. Um, especially when you're starting a, a public bank um, and the feds participate in the development of that bank through, through mm -hmm. putting cash in from the Federal Reserve, um, there, are, there, are lent, there are requirements that are in place that, that the, these public banks are going to have to follow like any other community bank. One final point mm -hmm. to community banks. The, so I used to serve on a, on a local community bank and I understand the challenges that we have and the important role that they play and they'll continue and we need them to continue to play the important role. The establishment of a public bank, whether in Santa Fe or throughout New Mexico, I think adds a level of, um, of participation that community banks could, can, could count on to fund uh, potentially high-risk loans that the feds would not deem creditworthy, if you will. So again, let's say that there's a business that's been in place for the last five years, they have a nice operating track record, uh, they've got a growth strategy, but they haven't necessarily had the cash available on hand to cover a debt service requirement or their or their debt ratios aren't where the banks needed to be uh, to properly fund uh, to properly fund the, the loan if you brought in a community bank to participate in that loan or if you brought in a, I'm sorry a public bank to participate in that loan with the community bank uh, there's a strong likelihood that that small business is going to get funded that means good things for the community because their money is staying in the community mm -hmm. it's supporting a small business there's a rate of return that's being earned that's market uh, a market rate and, and we have a small business that's employing people and has an opportunity to truly grow. That is, the, that is one of the likely scenarios mm -hmm. that would occur with the public bank. Let me ask Gwendolyn, because what I'm hearing in, from Mayor Gonzalez when I've read about public banks, it's, it's reaching sectors like people can't get capital, they're unbanked, or projects. You know, we got into trouble <laughs> not too long ago by having loose underwriting standards for lending money to people. So how do you ameliorate the risk? with a public bank because maybe you know people can have great ideas but sometimes they're not going to pay back a loan and you have to be really cautious about that so in a pub what what mechanisms are there in a public bank to protect against that are these fdic insured institutions well like the mayor was saying the way public banks work in this country so far is through partnership with the local community banks they don't actually do the retail lending themselves. The community banks do the lending okay. and do the underwriting and make sure they meet all the standards. The public bank serves as like a wholesale banking entity that can support the community banks to make loans that might have a little longer term 
or be somebody that's a little more risky in terms mm -hmm. of the um, loans that they're making. That's what our public banks do in Vermont right now. When they're borrowing money from Wall Street to do the lending that they do to correct for market problems, they lend to people that need money over a little longer term than the banks are willing to take on, and they lend to startup businesses more often than the really big banks do. So the amelioration of the risks that you're talking mm -hmm. about comes from the partnership with the state chartered banks and from very tight regulatory and financial controls in the bank. It's not a political entity. The politics come in when they set the goals for what the bank is trying to achieve. Okay. So in North Dakota, for example, they've decided that they want the bank to make more lenient student loans for doctors so that they have more doctors in North Dakota. Student lending could be an area where public banking could play a big role in making life easier on our student population than it is now. Okay, we only have about a minute left. I apologize. Just tell me briefly the symposium taking place. On Saturday, yes. starting at 10. Okay. Um, the mayor's called it, and it's co-sponsored by the Public Banking Institute and a local New Mexican organization called We Are People Here. Mm -hmm. We have people coming from all over the country and a representative of the public banking sector in Germany coming to speak. So it'll be a great symposium. We're really looking forward to it, and I'm sure people will get a lot out of it. Everybody's invited. There's plenty of room. Still registrations left. So What's the website? Banking. I, oh. Banking. <laughs> Banking. Sorry. Right. I don't Banking know on New Mexico. Right. Banking on New Mexico. Banking on New Mexico. Sorry, I put you on the spot. I was just going to say, well, I, I want to I want to close real quick on, on this point. We're starting a conversation in Santa Fe. We hope it doesn't end here. Okay. The idea of, the, of, of this symposium is, is to bring awareness to the opportunities of what a public bank can do. My hope is that this conversation takes place all over the state and ultimately at the end of the day, that we have a statewide conversation on what we can do to increase access to capital, to get our economy moving again, to make sure that small businesses know that New Mexico truly will bank on them using our own resources to invest in small business creation. And this is the beginning, hopefully, of what will be a very long dialogue that leads to action. Okay, so it's bankingonnewmexico.org and it's open to the public, they can register and go. Yeah, and Santa Fe, thanks to the mayor's efforts, is now leading the nation on this. Great. So hopefully the conversation will be happening at larger levels. Well, too. we'll see what happens and come back and talk about it as That'd things progress. Thank, Thank you, you for so having much. us. Appreciate it.